Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your bro. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how arrays work in Java. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. Alright, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to explain arrays. An array is used to store multiple values in a single variable. That is it. They're really not that complicated, but they can seem kind of intimidating. So let's begin with a simple string variable called car. And I will assign this a value of Camaro. What I could do is that I could store multiple values within the single variable by turning this variable into an array. And these are the steps to do so. Next to the data type, I'm going to add a set of straight brackets. And then with the values, I'm going to surround the values with a set of curly braces. And that is it. And for fun, I'll rename this as cars because that makes more sense. So it would make more sense to name this something that is plural because it contains more than one value. So let's add a few other cars. Let's say I would like to add a Corvette and a Tesla. And that is it. That is an array of cars. So in order to access one of these elements, arrays have spots, kind of like parking spots and they are called elements. So let's say I would like to access this first element. So I'm going to take the name of my array, which is cars, add a set of straight brackets, and then list the element number. So computers always start at zero. If I want to access this first element, I'm going to write zero. And I could reassign this. Let's say I would like to instead place my Mustang within element number zero. And let's print whatever is within the first element of our array of cars. Cars, straight brackets, zero. So this will print my string of Mustang if I want to access the next element. So this is zero, element number zero, and the next one is element one, then two, so on and so forth. In my next element of my array of cars, we have a Corvette and then a Tesla. So what happens if I attempt to access an element that does not exist? So let's put three here. Well, what we'll get is an array index out of bound exception because this array does not have this element, element number three. It only has elements zero, one, and two. But I could add another element. Let's say I'm going to add a BMW to element number three. So then we no longer get that error because our array has a total of four elements, zero, one, two, three. One thing that you should know with arrays, when you assign values, they all have to be the same data type. They have to be consistent. For example, I couldn't add the primitive integer value of one, two, three, because what this states is that this is a type mismatch, cannot convert from int to string. So if you have an array of strings, for example, you can only add strings. If this was an array of integers, well, I could only add integers then to this array. So you have to make sure that the data type of the values that you're adding are all consistent with the data type of the array. Now, there is an additional way to create an array, and that is by first allocating the amount of elements that we'll need and then storing the values later on in the program. So this is an additional way to write an array. We type in the data type of the array, straight brackets, the name of the array, we'll call it cars, equals new, the data type again, straight brackets, semicolon. Within the straight brackets, we'll assign how many elements we would like within this array. Let's say we would like three. So we can assign a total of three strings to our array of cars. And let's do that. So later on in this program, right here's a good spot, we will assign each of the elements of our array of cars. So cars at element number zero will equal my Camaro. And then cars at element one will equal a Corvette. And cars at element two will equal a Tesla. And then we can display each element of this array. So let's begin with cars at zero. This contains the Camaro, then the Corvette, and then the Tesla. So this is an additional way to write an array. We can first declare the amount of elements that we would like for this array, and then we could assign the values later on in the program. 
Before we finish this video, I'm going to explain how we can use a for loop to iterate through all of the elements of an array. Let's say we would like to display all of the elements of this array. So let's create a for loop to do that. For, a set of parentheses, and then a set of curly braces. With for loops, there are three statements. The first is that we need some sort of index or counter. So let's say int i equals zero. That is the first statement. For the second statement, this is our condition. We'll continue this for loop as long as i is less than array cars dot length. And lastly, we will increment our index by one. So let's display whatever is within our array of cars at element number i. So i is going to begin at zero, then after each iteration of this for loop, it's going to increment by one. So when we run this, this will display all of the elements of our array of cars, Camaro, Corvette, and Tesla. All right, everybody, so that's what an array is. It's really just used to store multiple values within a single variable. If you need to access one of the elements of an array, you just list the name of the array and the element number in which you're trying to access. So if you would like a copy of this code, I will post all of this in the comments down below. Please don't forget to smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.